Hello everyone, it is the start of week 22 of the school year. Hello, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. It is January 30th, 2023. It is week 22, like I mentioned. And yeah, it's the last Monday of this month. I can't believe we're already starting February on Wednesday. So I wanted to give you a rundown of our day today. This morning I started with my homeroom, which is my block one, and we were working on Food Fight. So Food Fight is from Wonders Unit 3, week five. And what we did is we reviewed the passage and then I had the students work on the reading to respond. So basically in the read to respond question, they needed to write how knowing about the two opposing claims can help them better understand genetically modified foods. So this is the passage right here and we have it all annotated on the online version of it. So once we did that, the students went to page 74 and they went ahead and answered this particular question and they had some sentence starters here to use and we also talked about what those benefits and drawbacks would be for genetically modified foods. I help the students wrap their answer. So wrap stands for restate the question, answer it, and then prove it. So they needed to use words from the question to restate it and then provide their answer and then go into the passage using those sentence starters to provide evidence that supported how genetically modified foods were good and how they were bad. For my afternoon class, because I, that's my ESOL class, I went ahead and I created an anchor chart on the board to kind of help them Think about how genetically modified foods are helpful and how they are harmful, which is connected to the activity that they were working on last week, Friday. Here is that anchor chart. So we have helpful and harmful benefits and drawbacks for GM foods. So this is what the text was talking about that they could go ahead and use in their answer. And these are how they were harmful and that how they can go ahead and use it in their answer. And these are the helpful versus harmful posters that the students were working on for the anchor text, which is about genetically modified corn, BT corn. So that is what we were working on with reading. And then for writing, we were back in our civil rights movement argumentative essay. So again, that one uses this booklet where we analyzed the prop last week and we're about to get ready to go into our bucketing the evidence activity but I was trying to make sure the students had completed their notes and their notes catcher for each source. So this is the notes for source one, civil rights pioneers, source two, Tallahassee bus boycott, and source three, the St. Augustine during the civil rights movement. So my block one is done with these notes. My block two just needs to wrap up source one. And then tomorrow, actually tomorrow, they're gonna be taking the district writing test. So we're gonna put a pause on this activity and continue it on Wednesday. So Wednesday, I'll have them sort the evidence to group similar details together and then use that to create their buckets that will then turn into their body paragraph. So it's all a little bit about process. But I am done with Monday. It feels like it was a very long day. Today also happens to be celebrating boba tea so or bubble tea because I went to Google and it has the little Google animation and there's a bubble tea place nearby that also sells rolled up ice cream. So I'm going to treat myself to both. So I'll see you tomorrow. It is now the end of the day on Tuesday and just the update that I need to give you is the students worked on their district writing assessment. This time they did it on the computer. They had to type out their essay and make sure that they addressed the prompt. The sources were on the screen. I showed them some of the tools that they can use with the online platform, which included highlighting so they can highlight important details or evidence to use to back up their claim since it is an argumentative essay. So both of my classes were able to take the test today and now I'm in the process of scoring all those tests and then later on in the week we'll start to go over each part of what they needed to do with this type of test and give them an opportunity to revise their final version so that i can give that final revised version a grade so the students will get a score based on our holistic rubric that the state provided for us but i will give them a grade based on the entire process of revising their essay as we move forward 
So that is all that I have for the students that, about what they did today. I did show them some things that I wanted them to remember. So let me show you some of the anchor charts. I wanted to remind them how to use a planning sheet. And here is one version, which we call the spaceship. They have their claim, which is the topic that addresses the topic, their reasons to support that, or they can use the buckets where these bullets will be evidence that go and support these different reasons. I also reminded them of the pencil elaboration strategy so that they find different ways to elaborate as they explain and support their claim. I also went over like two students wanted to share their essays after everybody was done. So they were able to share their essays on the board and some other students wanted to also share theirs. So tomorrow morning, I'll give those students that opportunity to do so. They were actually very excited, my block one. My block two, I know they need more support because most of my class are learning English but I will use scaffolded resources with them so that they can build on what they have already written. And of course, using paragraph frames and sentence starters is really good with that group of students. So I am gonna wait off a little bit. Tonight, I am going to the Teacher of the Year banquet. Tonight, we get to learn who is the Teacher of the Year and the Rookie Teacher of the Year for our entire district. As you may remember, I was part of the North Region Teacher of the Year Committee to choose the teacher that represented the North Region. So now we are going to see which other teachers represented the other three regions. There's four regions in total in our district and who is the teacher that will represent the entire district for both rookie teacher and teacher of the year. Let me show you what I'm wearing. So this is my outfit from Avi and Viv, which is a collection in Target. So I love this shirt. This shirt was such a bargain. It was originally $25 and I got it for $7.50. And these pants are also from Avi and Viv. These shoes are also from Target. They're from a New Day collection that I got some time ago. You will not be able to find them now. But yeah, this is my little outfit and I'm ready to have a nice time tonight. Maybe I'll vlog a little bit here and there of tonight. Maybe I won't, but I'll let you know who the winner is tomorrow. Anywho, I will leave you for now and I will see you later. For Rookie Teacher of the Year is da, 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 Ms. Soleil Lovato! It is an absolute honor for all of us up here uh, to truly pronounce the name of our Teacher of the Year. And the honor goes to an incredible teacher. <laughs> His name, Don Colorado. The end of the day wednesday and i'm getting ready to leave but i wanted to let you know what we did today today we went ahead for my block one class which i had this morning we reviewed food fight and how to find the author's claim and we completed the organizer that goes with relevant details that support the author's claim then i had the students go ahead and read the anchor text a new kind of corn and then i put them into groups so that they can complete the anchor chart to show how corn was helpful and how it was harmful. After that, I had them go ahead and work in groups again to come up with the author's claim as it pertains to that passage. And they were working on that activity and then we ran out of time. So they'll finish tomorrow morning before they, or tomorrow afternoon, because I had them tomorrow afternoon before they take their unit test or this week's test. So then with my afternoon block, block two, I was working with them with the same thing. They went ahead and finished their anchor charts as well, showing how a new kind of corn, BT corn is helpful and harmful. But then with them, because most of the class is ESOL, 
I went ahead and worked with them to complete the author's claim organizer for a new kind of coin. Tomorrow we'll finish that up and wrap it up. I also had my afternoon class come to the board and kind of share their opinion on what they thought about a new kind of coin, which is the BT coin. Since the author really doesn't tell us how they actually feel about it, they just state different information about the BT coin and show the reader how it is good and how it is bad. And then it's up to us to come up with our own opinion. And the reason why I did this poll is to kind of piggyback on what they're going to answer tomorrow. This is the annotated passage that shows how the BT coin is helpful and how it is harmful. And then students use that information to complete their chart. And the voting is right here. So what is your opinion about BT coin? I did this through classroom screen, which I absolutely love. And tomorrow they're going to answer this question, which is what is your opinion about BT coin and why do you feel this way? That is what we ended up doing today for reading. We didn't get to writing because I wanted to make sure that they wrapped up this activity since tomorrow I do need them to take that reading test so that we can move on and try to catch up to where we're supposed to be in our reading units. So tomorrow we will definitely try to touch up on writing and continue with our civil rights movement argumentative essay. So that is all that I have to share with you for today, Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, it's the end of the day on Thursday. I just finished my Minecraft club and it was the first day out of all the days since we started Minecraft that the students were able to join my Minecraft world because the updates have slowly been rolling into the laptops and my desktop got updated. But I had two students that still weren't able to join, so we're gonna work to make sure that they get into the world next week because they already started building a community and it's just what I pictured that this club would be. So very excited. The kids were even more excited to play together. So very, very, very good. So today I started with my block two as my morning group and I just wanted to make sure that they finished their author's claim graphic organizer, which I'll show you in a moment if I haven't already shown you mine. And then after that, they reviewed their votes for yesterday on their opinion on BT coin and they wrote to the question. After they did that, I went ahead and I read the paired selection with them and we discussed the similarities and differences between the anchor text and that paired text. So I didn't have enough time with my group in the morning, which is my block two to get them ready to start their wonders assessment for that unit. So I will try to do that tomorrow. Maybe I can do like stations so that they can get it done. So I will have my five Chromebooks and my afternoon group. We basically make sure that they finish that same assignment, but they were doing it in groups. And then after that, we read the paired selection. We went over it and then they started their wonders test. A lot of them haven't finished, so it's just a matter of giving them some time tomorrow and just making sure that those tests are all completed. Because next week, Monday and Tuesday, I have to administer the iReady AP2 assessment. I know it feels like these poor kids are getting so many tests. I'm just like, this week alone, we took the district writing test. We did, at least with one of my groups, the wonders test. Last week, they took another wonders test. They also were taking some other tests, and next week, we're doing AP2. <laughs> but we're gonna do what we can. So let me show you some of those uh, graphic organizers and the activities that the students were working on today. This is my example for that author's claim graphic organizer for a new kind of corn. So they needed to look at what the author actually said since the rest of the passage was talking about the perspective of a farmer and the perspective of a consumer. But this is what we gathered from the main text and then this is what we came up with the author's claim. Then I had my block one, which I had this afternoon, do the same voting activity that my other class did yesterday, and this is how they voted. And then from there, they went to this question, which asked them what their opinion about BT corn was and why they felt that way, and they gave them some sentence starters that they can use in their response. So after students wrote their response, I also gave them two examples of what their answers could have been. So if they thought that BT coin was good, this is an example of what they could have written. And if they thought that it was bad, this is an example of what they could have written as well. So that is what I went over with them today. And then we actually ended up having some time with my block one in the afternoon to introduce the unit that we needed to do or finish this week on why do we need government. So 
we will continue working on that unit tomorrow. So that is basically, in a nutshell, what we did today. And now I'm getting ready to gather my things and go home. See you tomorrow. We have made it to the end of the day on Friday and you can hear from my voice. I'm losing my voice. I'm not getting sick, but I'm losing my voice. It's been quite a week. And today was like the cherry on top that just made me cry. My students in my afternoon class, I was asking some students to move from one side of the classroom to the other so I could do the scaffolded ESOL test or ELL test, the English language learner test for the wonders unit we just wrapped up. And they were not being careful. One student pushed another student and my document camera ended up on the floor. I cried. I sobbed, I didn't know what to do. I tried to put it back together, but that piece will not go in and the inside part of it, there's something broken. The camera still turns on, but it doesn't zoom in or out, which is important, and it doesn't autofocus. I then remembered that I had bought an extra one of those same cameras on eBay last year for like 50 bucks. It doesn't work as good because the power um, supply it's very finicky if you just touch it lightly it loses power but I set it up so here is my replacement camera and it's an old model so that's why they're so affordable on eBay I even went into eBay and I looked to see how much one would cost and there's one for like 80 bucks so it ranges from 40 to like 80 or 100 bucks and what I did is I put this so it kind of Secure is this table. I moved this table a little bit over so that we don't have an incident again where the document camera ends up on the floor. But this is the scaffolded test that I was talking about. The ESOL students had the first passage. It has a lot of visuals and words to help them understand the passage and answer the questions. They even eliminate one of the answer options that's not correct. So students only choose out of three. And our district department is the one that creates the test for us. So I really, really like it. And I have about 11 ESOL level one students, one ESOL level two, and then my ESOL level threes and up take the regular test on the computer. So my level ones and twos, we were working with this test and it helps them, you know, learn the language and understand the reading passage. So I'm glad I was able to do it together. I had a new ESOL student to class this week she is new to the country doesn't speak english so these kind of activities help because it shows pictures that go with words and some words are very familiar in spanish as well so it helps them most of my students do talk spanish i only have one student that speaks french and creole but she's already speaking english and understanding so much so i'm very proud of her and i know that language acquisition takes time and everyone is not the same so we just do what we can with the strategies that we have with my homeroom class, they were finishing up their tests and some of the assignments and getting their iReady minutes done. And we also went ahead and read the shared selection for unit four, weeks one and two for Wonders, which was a world without rules, talking again about why we need government. So we went ahead and went over that and I gave them their independent assignment to do while I worked with my five Chromebooks to make sure our students were finishing their tests and I was giving them feedback on how they were doing. That was my day and it's been quite a week <laughs> lots of self-care to do this weekend so i'm gonna grab my things and get home i hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this week 22. next week is another week so we'll see what happens next week we're also celebrating our 100th day of school on wednesday so the students are encouraged to decorate a shirt for a t-shirt competition showing the 100th day so we'll see what happens then too but if you enjoyed coming along with me, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought, any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello, dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.